Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Nikki back again for another video. And we are checking out part two of the Dingle Hopper domicile for Kenjo and Philae. Now we're back into the furnishing and I'm going to be starting with the living room and using some island living stuff and some Celadoradian stuff. I mean, he's a budding uh, archaeologist and so he's collected things over the years before he met Filet, so he brought them to the house. They were in storage, of course. Uh, now we are choosing a really cool rug. I want to keep it neutral and let the furniture do the talking. I like to let the furniture and add pops of color do the talking and keep some of the other things a bit more neutral. Now we're in the dining room and I'm fiddling with this and I'm going to be fiddling with this for a while. I changed the table like three freaking times because I'm like, well, it's too big, it's too small, it's not quite right, it doesn't really fit with the space, it's not the kind of look I'm going for, you know. Kind of like doing your makeup, doing your hair. I don't know if I like it or not. I'm a very indecisive builder. I'm also a very slow builder. Are you guys a slow builder? Let me know in the comments below. Then we can commiserate on our snail speed building. I put in that really cool hutch and some Silvaderadian accessories, some clutter, but not really uh, decorations. I changed this table again to finally something from Island Living. It's a very plain table, but it allows the other things in the room that are a bit more decorative to stand out. Now I put in a high chair for the baby on the way. You know, they have to prepare. I'm putting in some jungle adventure counters. Still don't know if I like it or not. I might go back in and change it later on today. And in this kitchen I use a lot of stuff from the Simkia pack and the kitchen set by Harry and Felix Andre. Now Illogical Sims made the Sim Kia pack. Now I'm just playing musical counters for a little bit. And I start putting the matching upper cabinets in, but then I changed it to something from Sim Kia because I thought it fit the space better and kept it looking a little bit more modern. But still cute, understated, and storage for clutter make it look a little lived in. I love the copper stuff that I'm putting in there. It really brings warmth to the space where white can seem a little cold. I have to remember to put a wall texture on that little smidgen of a wall there. I moved the kitchen sink and the stove around and I put in a dishwasher. I mean, it's not like they're going to actually use it. They're going to go wash their dishes in the bathroom sink anyway. So, you know, whatever's, right? I put some lights behind the cabinets and I generally like to do that, but then I changed them to something a little bit more open. So I don't know if I'm going to do something and try to come up with an under cabinet lighting situation again for things like that or what. I'm not sure yet. I mean, the kitchen's cute. Don't get me wrong. I just don't know if I like it. <laughs> I like it, but I don't think I love it. You know what I mean? What do you think I should do with the kitchen? Let me know what you guys think about that. Leave me some comments and some ideas. See, these are these open shelves, and then there are some matching enclosed things that I kind of alternated just because I liked the look of it. Now I use those little square shelf things and made a different style of shelving for Flay's office. Well, I mean, I guess everyone can use it, but I built it specifically with Flay in mind because she is a teacher and hoping to become a university professor and teach art. 
That's what her goal is, her end game. And she does a lot of work from home, like grading, and you know, it's nice to have a space specifically for that. And of course, there is a studio that we will be working on here in a little bit. And I'm adding some wall textures, trying to figure out what's going to look good. I don't want it to be too over the top. I kind of want to keep it neutral and let the furniture and the decorations speak for themselves. See, she has that little space down there for painting. It's like the studio space. It's not like they have working cars, so the garage area is a really great space for an open air studio for them to work on more creative endeavors and for Kenjo to work on those examinations of the very dirty artifacts which are important but they can make a mess let's not do that inside now we're working on the courtyard putting in a table and some chairs out there it's a great place for a barbecue we're going to decorate the gateway just a little. Now I'm starting to add in some fun play things outdoors for the baby and whoever else decides to come in the future. When Filet decided to have kids when she was much younger, she's like, I want to make sure that they have a really great place to play that's safe and fun and colorful and give them everything that they could possibly want to play with. It's good for the kids to play outside instead of being stuck inside all the time. It's not like they have COVID-19 happening over there in Sulani, unless they do. That is a custom content chicken coop, but I don't keep it. I might put that in a bit later. Now we're starting to work on a little bit more landscaping stuff. And we're gonna put in I changed the bonfire out for the um, cooking pit. Put some trash cans out there, a mailbox. They have a trash chute in the little utility room by the kitchen. Now we're going to get into the landscaping, my favorite part of all time. Put in some trees, move the foundation down because everything else decides it wants to float if I don't. I like how the tall, those tall trees frame certain aspects of the building. And some pointy things, and some soft things, and some tall things, and some short things. Now I do that thing with the spandrel and the posts. Now I'm putting these really cute copper lanterns from Jungle Adventure up on the posts. And I'm changing the stuff in the courtyard a bit because I didn't want the terrain paint. I wanted a bit more of a hardscape happening there with the tile. Silvaterradian tile. Messing around with some trees. Now we're going to go in back into Debug, my favorite place for the plants. Using varying colors and textures and heights and groupings. That is my secret to landscaping, is group the plants. And when you think you've put in enough plants, add more. But cluster them together. It makes it a lot more full. Don't be afraid to layer them. I have a series that I am working on called Landscape My Build. It's going to be a YouTube series that's going to start off in my Twitch stream. Same name. You can find me there. Comma. Please give me a follow. I'd love to have you there. Uh, and I take your unlandscaped builds with the hashtag seminary landscape that you tag me in. It can be any lot type with the max size of 30 by 20. 
comment. You can tag me with that. And it is a no pressure collab and I give you full credit. I will contact you via either Twitter or Twitch or whatever and get your information and all the links that you want me to add into the description box because I want you guys to get full credit for your thing. You don't have to do anything. It can be an old build. It could be a new build. You don't have to build anything new for me. You can just tag me and I will search for the tag. And when I use your build, I'll contact you. So no pressure. Don't worry about it. I do all of the work. Now I'm putting some palms and some wildflowers here at the corners because it just needed a little something, a little wild, a little not so manicured for some reason. I don't know. I like to add manicured parts with wild parts and things sticking out all over the place. It just makes it a little bit more natural looking and Sulani is a very natural kind of place. Now when it comes to the Landscape My Builds series, when I contact you, we will talk about if you are looking for anything specific or if you wanted me to use my artistic eye. And we'll talk about that if you have a certain style that you're going for and all of those particulars. And I will not touch the inside whatsoever unless you ask me to. And it'll only be for adding plants in your house or your building, any building. See, this is how I like to do it. I like to shove little wildflowers and more scraggly looking things just to give it a bit more visual interest, some texture. And you see I like to group things a lot because it looks full. It looks more mature. A mature garden is gorgeous. Like it's been there for a while. It's grown in. Like they might have built the home around all of this foliage and maybe moved some things to protect them. And again we're using some more texture to mimic what is out front and on the side. We use similar colors, similar types of plants to just kind of bring a little bit of continuity to it, even though I do add some other things here and there in different areas depending on where I'm at and why I need it there. But it's nice to carry a general theme throughout the entire landscape. It just makes everything continuous and it makes sense. Otherwise it looks very disconnected. I'm a visual kind of a gal. Because if you didn't know, I am a painter. I do art. And my art links, if you are ever interested in looking at my art and or purchasing my art, which is my job, and that is how I get fed and take care of myself uh, and my animals. Those are down in the description. Here's some finishing touches, just a few things here and there putting over a little pergola, some extra trees, a few little plants here and there, some stuff in the courtyard, adding a little bit of decoration. Now I actually add a water feature here in a little bit. I didn't add any fountain bits in it yet. I probably will a little bit later. I like to use these larger vases and put uh, fountain parts in there. It makes it look cool. It's a really nice way to add some visual interest into a space. A water feature. And it doesn't have to be a big water feature. It can be a tiny water feature. Now here's a mini stop motion. I forgot to press record while I was doing this so I just backed up and then moved forward and made some snapshots. Over here where the pool is, here's a photo tour of the finished product.
thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this build in both parts. Make sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell and comment, rate, and share with your friends. I appreciate you. May you be well, happy, and peaceful, and healthy. And I will see you guys in the next video.